All right, today, guys, behind me or next to me, have the the Magnuson 2650 uh, for you LT owners out there, uh, whether it's LT1 or LT4. This is our supercharger of choice. Um, we do a lot of boosted applications here. Um, obviously, a whole bunch of superchargers, turbos, um, centrifugal superchargers, root styles, um, twin screw blowers, but. Our supercharger of choice for most of our LT platforms is the Magnuson 2650. Um, so you guys out there that have a naturally aspirated car from the factory, whether it's a Camaro or a C7 Corvette, and you're looking for an extra 150 horsepower, an extra 100 uh, foot-pounds of torque just bolting on a simple supercharger system, this platform is the way to go. And if you check out our website, you'll see the different options that we have. Um, now an LT1 motor can only go so much. This Supercharger can support, I'm just gonna tell y'all, around 1400 horsepower max effort porting it with big engines and stuff like that. But your regular guys with a LT1 motor, the factory pistons and factory rods can only hold so much. So with this blower combination on it with the correct supporting mods um, when it comes to fuel and so forth, we usually keep them around 650, 700 rear wheel horsepower. Um, Anything over that is when we start doing our drop-in piston, so we do a, like a forged rod as well as a forged piston in it. Um, once we do that, we're able to turn the boost up and actually utilize the 2650 a little bit more um, to get you to the 850 rear wheel horsepower number to almost 1,000 rear wheel horsepower. So that's our 1,000 flywheel to 1,200 flywheel horsepower packages. Um, and that's for your LT1 guys, but just like anything, once you start adding more boost, obviously more fuel is needed. So um, again, it has to go in steps and stages. And again, um, call one of our sales staff and we'll be glad to walk you through the different platforms and what is needed to hit your goal. Whether you just want an extra 150 horsepower or you want an extra 250, 350 to 500 rear wheel horsepower. Um, for you LT4 guys out there, again, those things come with a factory 1.7 liter supercharger. Again, a great platform to start with. Um, those we do simple bolt-ons to um, and make 660 rear wheel horsepower to 750 rear wheel horsepower pretty easy, easily with a stock supercharger. Um, then we port the 1.7 to get 800 to 850 rear wheel horsepower. Um, the problem that I say we run into is um, yes, we make good dyno numbers. Yes, it'll make 800, 850 rear wheel horsepower, but we're spinning that little supercharger so hard it creates a lot of heat so for a little quick fifth gear pull in the dyno it's fine right even if it's 110 degrees outside it's not that big of a deal but when you're out with your buddies driving around for 20 minutes and then you decide to make a 60 to 150 pull by the time you're going 100 miles an hour uh, the thing heat soaks pretty good so we on some of our 850 and down packages that we sell with the factory blowers um, we do sell bigger heat exchangers and uh, tanks to you know help add two or three gallons of coolant uh, running through this factory supercharger system. Um, again, once we hit 800, 850 rear wheel horsepower, that's when I try telling customers, let's start thinking about going to the 2650. We can put this supercharger on your LT4 platform. We don't have to spin the supercharger nearly as hard um, to make, let's just stay 15 pounds of boost and 15 pounds of boost. We can actually make a little bit less boost more efficiently um, and still get the horsepower we want out of it versus the stock 1.7. Um, I don't know if that makes sense or not to y'all. Um, I hope it does. If then at that point, if you're like, hey, Steven, I want more than that. Well, the 2650 has the horsepower, I'm sorry, the big enough rotors to spin it harder to give us 15, 20, 24 pounds of boost depending on how efficient the engine is when it comes to camshaft, cylinder head, air box, uh, and exhaust, right? So in this particular situation, uh, you can run LT, we'll call it an LT1, LT4, 2650 supercharger with a factory 87 millimeter throttle body. And again, for most applications, 150 rear wheel horsepower gain, very easy to do. Um, on our LT4s and up, when we start making more horsepower, when it comes to the air inlets, we order it with the larger inlet with the 103 millimeter throttle body for I'd say 95% of our builds we do. We do offer uh, 108s and 112s and 120s and stuff like that, but those are for custom one-off um, larger builds with larger cubic inch motors that actually need as much air going into the motor as possible. Um, same thing with exhaust setups. Um, again, your average LT, LT4 
LT1, LT4 setup. A one and seven eighths header to a two inch header is more than enough to help this engine breathe with 15 pounds of boost going through it, even 18 or 20 pounds of boost. Now you start running 20 pounds of boost and up, that's when we start building custom race headers, which will be like a two to two and an eighth inch header with a three and a half inch collector. Um, but long story short, uh, whether any Gen 5 platform out there, I just wanted to kind of show you all the 2650, which I know you all have seen in so many of our videos, and try to explain a little bit of why we go this route. Me personally, it looks super clean under the hood. It, when we're done with it, it looks like it came from the factory, which I love. And it's just a super efficient supercharger. Um, you GM guys that have been modding cars for a long time, you know that the LSA came out years ago with a 1.9 blower. The LS9 came out with a 2300 blower. Um, now these new LTs have a 1.7, right? So this 2650 is a really big supercharger. So it's simple to just bolt this thing on, look super clean, and again, with the correct supporting mods and the correct supporting fuel system, this thing can produce, I've seen 12, 1300 rear wheel horsepower in race style applications. Um, but for your average customer, 850 rear wheel horsepower with this setup is a car that you can hop in and drive, beat the crap out of whether you're drag racing it, going to drive to the drag strip, going a nine or an eight second pass, driving it home, or going out with your buddies and just going 60 to 150 out in Mexico over and over and over again. This setup does it flawlessly and even we have customers that road race their cars they go to coda msr and other places around the country and again with supporting cooling mods when it comes to oil coolers and stuff like that this supercharger here stays super efficient um you just you don't have to spin the blower as hard to make the horsepower i hope uh i hope that kind of explains why we do what we do here um again there are several different platforms that we do use when it comes to uh, supercharger systems and turbo kits and stuff like that. But for your average customer, most of the customers that we deal with, I try to steer them in this direction once they hit a certain point. And again, if y'all have questions after this and y'all are watching this, again, email us anytime or give us a call and I'll be glad to walk you through it and try to understand or help you understand why we're gonna do what we're gonna do so you can hit your needs and your goals. Cut.